Hey, welcome back to the channel. I want to talk about what a complete embarrassment of an ideologue I used to be. <laughs> and this is something that's not easy to talk about, but I was so committed to the Watchtower, Jehovah's Witness cult or religion or high control group, whatever you want to call it. It didn't matter what I read or watched or saw or even experienced as a person. All I ever saw was what I expected to see which was Jehovah's Witnesses have the true religion, the world is debased and debauched and soon to end, and all of the things that I've been taught about the present time are in fulfillment at this time and are imminently about to reach their climax. And I'm gonna give you an example of just how deluded I was after I read a book. The book that I'm talking about is Sam Harris's The End of Faith. This came out in 2005, and although it's essentially talking about radical Islam, it's very, very caustic and very well argued against radical religious beliefs in general. I also read his book, A Letter to a Christian Nation. That also didn't affect me at all. But I want to talk about specifically what moved me about Harris's argument in this book because there's a very, very peculiar religious belief among Jehovah's Witnesses, and it's that, very shortly, the United Nations... God, I'm cringing even saying these words again. <laughs> the United Nations is going to be given sovereign authority over the whole Earth. All the nations in the world are going to say, here, here UN, have all of our power and authority. In effect, making it a one-world government. This... The first act of this one world government is going to be the destruction of religion. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. And that's what I believed completely and totally for nearly 20 years. Now, as I read Sam Harris's book, I wasn't reading his critique of radical beliefs and how controlling and how it distorts a person's worldview. All I read was, this is the beginning of religion's demise. Secularism is gone rampant. This is the zeitgeist beginning its march towards the inevitable destruction of religion. This is the beginning. And Sam Harris's book was, I saw almost as a harbinger for the imminent fulfillment of this so-called Bible prophecy. Now I'm going to read you two sentences from this book that indicates, and I read these as a fully committed believer, and it had no effect on me whatsoever. He says that while religious faith is one of the species of human ignorance that will not admit even of the possibility of correction, it is still sheltered from criticism in every corner of our culture. Faith leaves otherwise well-intentioned people incapable of thinking rationally about many of their deepest concerns. I read that and I completely agreed with what Sam Harris said. All of these religious people are deluded. They want answers and their confining and distorted religious conviction is blinding them from reality. It never even occurred to me to apply it to myself. Even though the argument in Harris's book was something that should have made me think deeply about my own religious convictions, all I could see in his book was confirmation of my own radical religious beliefs. That's how much of an ideologue I was. That's how under the spell of an ideology I was at that age. And I was in my late 20s at that time. I was baptized over 10 years. So when we have an ideology that is so potent, everything that we see, everything that we read, everything that we experience in life is probably going to to some degree, confirm our ideological point of view. And so, how did I wake up is a valid question. How was it that a complete ideologue managed to wake up from that ideology? I don't have a full answer for that question, but I do know that when someone is fully committed, they can't be reasoned with. So how do we know if someone is ready and if someone is just not in that space yet to question an ideology or a dogma that they are totally committed to? Well, I can't give you that answer because I don't even fully understand what happened to me in that process. All I know is my own experience. 
and my own experience is very different from many other people's experience. Some people wake up in days and weeks. For me, it took years, literally years. I'm not sure why that is. Perhaps it was because of just how fully and completely devoted I was, how completely immersed in the dogma and in the teachings and how, how dependent I was on the ideology for meaning in my life, for relevance. I honestly feel if I didn't have that in my life, well, what's, what's the purpose of living? But what I do know is that even after you've broken free from an ideology, and this can be religious or political or whatever it is, it might even be a, a controlling relationship you're in. Even if you've physically stepped back, I don't think you can be fully intellectually and emotionally free until you forgive yourself for being that way and you forgive other people, whether that's the people who indoctrinated you and raised you in an ideology or the people who coaxed you into it, even if they did so out of sincerity. You need to forgive them and you need to forgive yourself because if you don't, all you'll have is probably self-pity and resentment to others. And that's no way to live your life and it's no way to address the issue. It's only after you've forgiven yourself and forgiven others that you can speak freely and truthfully. And if, if people are offended by honest, truthful and direct speech, they're pro they probably have an ideology, but it will free you from being angry and being full of self-pity. So once you've achieved that step, you can liberate yourself from an ideological point of view and be unafraid of the consequences of encountering contrary information, encountering people who had the ideology that you knew in the past. So that's just some thoughts I had on my own total commitment to an ideology, what I think is necessary to be able to fully break free. I know everyone's experience is different, um, but that's just some thoughts on what I was and not exactly who I am, but um, what I hope to become.